So you want to make a LUT. What's a LUT? How do you make a LUT? And ultimately, how can you package your LUT and export it so you can make money with it? That's today's episode as I show you how to create and export LUTs in Premiere Pro. So let's roll. What is up everybody? My name is Steven of Steven and Janica. And I think we all can agree that this has been a crazy, crazy week. Not only have we had what's happening down south of the border, but we've had the rise and fall of cryptocurrency. We've also had my hometown Blue Jays signing George Springer. Yeah, it's it's been a week. To top all that off, I'm talking to you today about LUTs. What are LUTs? How can we make the LUTs in Premiere Pro? And how can we export them? And also export them in a way that we could potentially make money with them. So what is a LUT? Well, simply put, a LUT is an abbreviation for look up table. And what that refers to is this is a file that can be utilized in your editing program to color grade your subject material. A LUT is essentially a series of numbers that the program utilizes to allocate that particular color pattern to your color footage. And they can be instrumental in shaping both the footage you're creating as well as the mood you're trying to establish when you're doing film work. So today I'm gonna to walk you through how to create the LUT, export the LUT, and also dress that LUT up. So if you're looking to package that LUT up, possibly on your website or on some sort of platform that you want to share the LUT or even sell it, you can now have a personalized feel to that LUT when you're putting it out there. So let's hop into Premiere Pro and get going. Okay, so here we are in Adobe Premiere Pro CC 2020. And I have a little file folder uh, over here of some vlog footage that I shot on Toronto's waterfront and I have my sequence set up. This is a uh, 4K 60 frames a second footage shot in vlog. And vlog is the flat color profile that you can get on the Lumix G9, GH5 series, GH4, etc., And it gives you the most dynamic range for grading in post-production. So here I am trying to look epic more like I'm looking cold. But anyways, that's the footage that we're gonna work with here as we color grade. So before we begin any process in color grading, I always like to make an adjustment layer. So adjustment layers essentially are layers that you can put over top of the footage that you have in your timeline, and it doesn't directly affect the, the file itself in the timeline, or on that sequence, pardon me, it actually affects the adjustment layer. But since it's sitting on top of the file, the color grading then applies to what's below it. So I'm gonna make a adjustment layer here and put it right on top of my file here of me looking cold. So now we have an adjustment layer that we can color grade. So I'm gonna do a really quick color grade for you guys, nothing too fancy, just to show you what we can create and then export as a LUT. So here we go, I'm gonna change the contrast I'm gonna move that up a little tiny bit. I'm gonna move the highlights right by here. Shadows, I'm gonna move them down a little tiny bit just to give a bit more definition to the darks here because we don't forget in a V-Log on a Lumix G9, it does bump your ISO up to 400. So I'm gonna move the white up here to compensate for the shadows a bit. Maybe make those blacks look a little bit. Yeah, there we go. And also move a bit of a warmer yeah, color over hue overall. It was freezing cold outside, so why not? Let's make it warmer. I like to also go into the creative tab right here, and I like to change the, the fade of film, the balance and the sharpening and vibrance here. We're gonna come back to fade of film in a second, but I like to bring up that vibrance of the colors here a little tiny bit and a bit of a saturation. So here's where we start to color grade in detail. Shadow, let's make it a little bit warmer for the shadows. We're gonna make the highlights a little, I guess, yeah, we'll go with a warmer feel to it, why not? And now we're gonna go into the place where the magic begins. So this is the curve section. So curves here affect uh, highlights and they affect shadows. We've got the red uh, curve for uh, red RGB, green RGB, and blue RGB. What we like to do is we often like to have a, a, a S pattern for most of these uh, curves. So you like to basically draw three points here. This is a very rudimentary color grading, by the way, nothing too detailed, but I'll, I'll do a, a more detailed color grading uh, video in the future. I like to bring down the shadows a little tiny bit. The midtones we can bring up a little bit. And the highlights I like to kind of raise. So you get a little bit of an S happening here. It's a bit of an S pattern. Now we're gonna bring up the reds. Same thing, three dots. And we're gonna bring the reds down a little bit. And as you can tell in the image, all of a sudden we're creating a theme. We got a theme of me going here. It makes, yeah, every little bit of push here on these uh, RGB curves really affects what you get there on that frame. 
So I'm gonna move this down a little, I move it up, yeah, let's go up to keep that S pattern consistent. Green, let's do the same thing. As I said, this is very quick, but it gets, you, you get the idea. So that, as the greens are now adjusting the blues of my jacket, they're adjusting the blonde of my badly needing to be cut hair. And also we can raise up the greens a bit here in the highlights. Maybe maybe a little, not too much. I'll make a, a sci-fi film here. And blues, uh, for the blue and yellow, let's go blue just a bit down the shadows. We're gonna go up here and just complete that RGB curve. So there we go. And as you can tell, we don't wanna have our highlights too blown out, but also I like to do here now in the creative tab, I like to create a bit of a faded film look. So that kind of gives it a bit of a more cinematic overly used term look to it, but there you go. So I'm gonna bring over the fade of film look a bit too. So this, all this color grading is all applying to that adjustment layer sitting on top of that video file. So if we play this now, yeah, it's it's looking pretty good for a really quick color grade. That's, that's not too bad. Face is a bit red, but it was cold outside. Anyways, so that is the color grading. If you wanna see it before and after, we can just take that off. That was before. And that's after. So, and like I said, this is a very quick color grading. This is not done by any means to showcase how to do it, but it gives you an idea. So since we now have this color grade done, we can export this color grade. How we do that essentially is we can go up here to the Lumetri tab under the uh, options of effects, graphics, sound, Lumetri color. We're gonna click this little hamburger button there and we're gonna go over here to export look or cube. Now I like to export the cube because the cube files I usually use as LUTs. So we're gonna click export cube and we're gonna be able to name this file. I had this file set up before as Moody City. So let's call this Cold Steven. Why not? Uh, and we're gonna save this as a cube LUT in this particular file folder. So now we've saved a LUT. That's amazing, we've created a LUT. So what this now applies to basically is that we can bring any footage and apply that LUT to it. So I think I have another file, yeah, here we go. I have another file on this timeline. This is a, another little shot here of the Toronto waterfront, looking very cold. And now I can apply that LUT to this file. Now there's two ways of doing this. I can apply this to the, the file directly itself, or as I prefer to do it, I like to prefer to utilize this with an adjustment layer. So let's make a new adjustment layer. I'm bringing it over top of the video. Do, 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 drag it over, fantastic. So now we have adjustment layer sitting on top of our video and we're gonna apply a LUT to that adjustment layer. So there's two ways of doing this. You can put it to the input LUT on the basic correction, or you can go into creative and you can also apply it to this look right here. I like doing or applying LUTs, part of me, to the creative aspect of things because you can adjust the intensity of it. And don't forget, LUTs might not work in every particular shot. They might have different colors that are in the shot, different highlights, different shadows. So utilizing this color grade might need to be adjusted. So what we can do here is that we can go and we can look for that LUT, which because it's right there, we saved it this folder, we can then apply this LUT that we just created. So there's coldsteven.cube. And as you can tell, we have now applied that LUT to that file. And we can adjust the intensity of this LUT or essentially how the color grading is affecting the file by moving this slider up and down. So if we take the intensity right down, we go back to the beginning. If we go back to where the LUT was originally placed at 100, we can also see that it goes to where the LUT was being created. You can also go overly intense as well, but let's put it back to 100. You can also make further adjustments to this LUT, of course. I mean, don't forget, we can change this to more of a blue hue. We can go to more of a contrast. If you wanna bring up a bit more of a shadows, uh, we can try that. Let's bring it down a bit. And then let's go over to the white balance here a bit. And let's go to blacks, bring those down, make this really gritty. So now let's take a look at this. So that looks pretty good. And that's utilizing the same cold Steven LUT that we had with this particular file right there. We have now put this on top of this particular scene. And so it's been, we've been able to kind of maintain that level or that style theme of video. And if we take a look at before and after, that's, be, that's after and that's before. So we've, we've come a long way in terms of being able to showcase 
the, the depth of shadows, the depth of saturation, Toronto's skyline in the background, and that's a big adjustment, but it didn't take that much work to do. And now we have the file so that in future, we can go back to that same LUT and utilize that. So here's my trick on how you can export your LUT and present it in more of a product format. So you can put it on your website, you can link it to various social media platforms, you can link it on your YouTube channel and essentially create a product that you can showcase or you can also sell. So let me show you how you can present this as a product. So what we have here is we have our timeline. We're gonna do a still capture of this part of the video. And for those who don't know how to do a still capture, you just go right below here on the image and you go to export frame. You're gonna click export frame. Very handy way of doing things because it does a really good job at capturing JPEGs in high definition of your work. So we're gonna go over here and we're gonna name this Cold Steven Pick. And we're gonna save it in our folder, say okay. It's gonna save a JPEG. So now we've created a still of this video and we're gonna put this on the cover of a box. A box you say? Well, I'll show you how it's done. I'm gonna bring up here a company called MediaModifier.com. Now this is not a plug. I'm not sponsored by them in any particular way. I stumbled upon them when I was looking for how to do this in creating a box format for my LUTs because I saw some content creators having this style of picture and I really wanted to have it. So MediaModifier.com gives you a whole bunch of different options on being able to download different mockups and different ways of showcasing your work. It does have a fee associated with it, but I can't impress enough about how effective and efficient this particular website is of being able to give you a very quick result for uploading your images to a specific template of a product you're trying to create. What I mean by that is that if you look around this website on MediaModifier.com, there is a thick standing product box mock-up generator. Say that 10 times fast, but essentially what this does is it creates a ping file or a JPEG file of your product as a box. And that's just so incredibly cool. So what we can do here is we can take our image still and we can put this as a front facing box. Now, of course you can do this in Premiere Pro to PSD files in Photoshop, but this is incredibly fast. And it also takes into consideration this little 3D effect at how the box is being angled. Now, if you're looking to save time, this is so key. So go to your front design, you're gonna add your image to the front design. So we're just gonna upload our image here cold Steven pick and we're going to adjust the uh, ratio of where the image appears on the box and also the layout of the box Get my face are nicely centered and we're going to press crop and bada bing bada boom we now have a box generator for our LUT that we can then either download the PSD file or we can download a ping file or a JPEG file and that is just so incredibly cool. Like I love the ease and simplicity of this. So we're gonna click download. I'm gonna go download image. Of course, there's different options. You can publish the social media directly to it. You can go and design it or cropper tool. And, oh, and before I do that, you can also change the background color. We can change the background to be dark. We can change it to be red. We can do all kinds of stuff there with the image. And we can also change the box color from white. We can go dark here if we wanna go more for a darker hue, which is kind of fun. Um, and we can also have a side design. So if you have like a logo and you want some printing on this side design, you can definitely add that, for example, logo up top here and I don't know, Steven's cold LUT there on the side. So you're, you're basically creating a product of your digital content. So all that's done, that's all great. We're gonna go download as a ping file, download image. It's now download to my images file. I'm just gonna go over here to downloads and let's just bring it up. And there it is. There is our product that we created a LUT for and now we have an actual box format that we can showcase on our site. And to give you an example of how this might look, I'm just gonna pull up my site really quickly here. And my site has LUTs that I've created already. I've got an urban look, a retro look, as well as a drone look. So if I go here on retro, you can see a box that we've already created utilizing a picture I have of Angie here back in the summertime. And I can sell this for $1.99 on my Squarespace site. So essentially you can create a product that allows you through your digital content to be able to have a product you can show and share and possibly sell. So 
I just a really, really cool program to check out or a site, pardon me, and that is mediamodifier.com. So I hope you found that review helpful on how to create a LUT in Premiere Pro, export it, and also dress it up and package it. If you like what you saw, please hit that like and subscribe button below so you can keep up to date on all the videos we have coming out. Hit that notification bell and also please comment on how you create your LUTs and drop us a link, message us and showcase your LUTs because we'd love to see the color grading process that you do. So until next time, keep looking and keep working in Premiere Pro and stretch your video editing by color grading your own personal style. Peace.